Oh, it's me, Doncho. Welcome back to the hideout, you guys. I'm so glad you guys can make it. And as you can tell from the title description, there is something different going on in this video, right? I'm not going to be talking about Jujutsu Kaisen or Phantoms here. What I will be talking about is 10 anime that I am watching this season that is airing currently weekly, right? And first, I want to talk about five that I'm hyped for, like... I'm really, really, really feeling and I'm ready to see more what's about to happen. And then five that I'm like, hmm, I watched the first episode, found it kind of interesting, maybe first one or two episodes and I found it kind of interesting. So I'm just like, okay, I want to see where this goes. And I want to bring these guys, bring these to you guys because, you know, this is a anime YouTube channel, right? I mean, we can't only talk about Jujutsu Kaisen and Phantom Seer forever. I want to bring you guys some more miscellaneous content, something that shows you guys more of what I like, what I enjoy, what I'm checking out weekly. And that way you guys feel like you have more you can comment about and more you can at me on Twitter about and we can have the discussions, all right? So if you like content like this and you want more content like this from me, don't forget to hit that like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because there will be more of this happening. There will be, because you know how dumb Dancho's hideout is, you know, well, if you aren't subscribed yet, maybe you don't know. Or maybe you do know, but you ain't subscribed yet. Well, if you do know and you ain't subscribed yet, what's, what's stopping you? What's stopping you? <laughs> but like I said, you guys, it's going to be 10 anime I'm talking about that I want you guys to check out this season. Five that I'm like, I need you to check this out. And five where I'm like, I think it'd be cool if you check this out. So before we get deeper into it, intro. First, I want to start with the five anime that I think you guys really, really need to check out. If you see me reach over here a little bit, that's because I do have my Mac up next to my camera. And I want to make sure that I don't mispronounce names or, you know, name the wrong stuff. And I am going to give you guys the Japan, I'm sorry, the English names, not the Japanese names. And the only reason why I'm giving you guys the English names is because... All of these that I am listing, I am watching on Crunchyroll or Funimation, right? So they're all ones that you guys can go find on streamer services that you use legally. And that you can, um, you know, watch those easily every week without having to wait for subtitles on the legal sites that, you know, all of us most likely have grew up or have found anime on. You know what I'm saying? So first and foremost, if you pay attention to me on Twitter, you already seen me talking about this anime, but it is that time I got reincarnated as a slime season two. I am a Rimaru stan. I love Rimaru Tempest. I love everything about um Isekais. To be honest, I know Isekais is like a dirty word for some reason in the anime community and people make Isekais seem like automatically trash. But I think what makes Isekais really cool is that they have this whole trope thing that you know that they're gonna have and that they put their own spin on it and that allows these series to be fun and allows these series to have more things that be, can be talked about you know like it just causes i think isekai causes the fun of anime to be put in the forefront with some cool plot points and some cool powers too depending on if it's an overpowered main character or it's not if you don't know anything about that time i got reincarnated as a slime shame on you <laughs> sorry that time i got reincarnated as a slime it's actually an isekai about a virgin man who dies right when he's about almost 40 years old he dies and gets reincarnated as a slime big shock <laughs> and so basically he's this special slime reincarnated in a world where basically it's the survival of the fittest with monsters and humans and demon lords and stuff like that and so he finds out um, that he is a special type of slime and not any regular type of slime. It has all of his memories from his past life. And so what happens is, you know, he ends up meeting a special someone who ends up bestowing the name Rimuru onto him. And now we know him as Rimuru Tempest. And um, I don't want to go into too much of the plot because it is season two. And if you have not seen season one, I suggest you go knock that first season out and then come in and get into season two because season two will be airing until about June. And then season two, part two will be coming out in July. So check that out, you guys, if you have not. Like, like I said, it's that time I got reincarnated as a slime season two. That is my number one so far this season. Um, I'm not including things like Jujutsu Kaisen into this because Jujutsu Kaisen is on its second core. So you guys already know what's going on. You know what I'm saying with that. But these I'm bringing up ones that are new this season. First episodes dropping, right? And then the second one I want to talk about is Kimono Jihen, okay? Kimono Jihen 
it's very funny because I knew nothing about the Kimono Jihen anime, and I actually just found the manga maybe two weeks ago, right? And I found the manga just going through my um manga, I think it's manga decks I was going through at the time, and I just was looking for manga, things like that, new things to read up on, and I found Kimono Jihen, and I absolutely love it. And the concept of Kimono Jihen is that there is this young boy named Kabane, or when you first meet him, his name was Dorotabo. And he is treated like a slave almost basically in this rural village that he's from until this man comes, this detective comes from Tokyo um, to inquire about these um, corpses, right? These dead, these animal corpses that have been popping up. People, you know, not people, but animals dying, but they've been, they've, they're mutilated corpses. They're not just like a dead animal, they're mutilated. So, you know, he's coming and he is a detective and he's checking all of that out. And I will not say anything else of what's going on when he comes and checks out because that would entirely ruin your experience of watching the first episode if you have not so kimono jihen is impressive if you know anything about kimonos they're you know kind of like yokai similar to that where there are these entities these supernatural entities that human beings usually in these series don't know about they have these powers they're like ghouls arachnids stuff like that right and so that is basically kimono jihen and if you know basically the translation of that is basically like kimono war and it's not really that off top from the beginning but once you if you're watching the anime as an anime only and you are getting through it hopefully by think by the end of this season and you'll see why it's called Kimono Jihen and things of that nature. But like I said, I don't want to give too much information about what happens in that first episode because it will ruin your experience and you trying to understand the characters and development that's given to them, right? So the third one I want to talk about, a 2.3 CN high school volleyball team. I hope I said all of that right. I think I could be wrong because on my notes, I just put 2.4 CN, whatever. But that is a new volleyball anime. Haikyuu fans, you might enjoy this. Only reason why I say might is because I don't know. I am not caught up on Haikyuu. I am currently on episode nine of season two. Don't attack me, but I'm trying to get through it, right? Um, but this actually, I, I love sports. Well, I love watching sports, but I'm not like a sports analyst type of person. I like sitting down and watching sports, but I'm not like, a, I'm going to know every player, know their stats, know what they do. I'm just not that type of person. I think my brain saves that type of information for like literary stuff but i do like sitting down and watching good sports i like watching basketball it's my favorite sport i love it um it was my favorite to play as well this one is volleyball and i don't know much about volleyball and i was learning about volleyball through haikyuu but now i'm learning some things from about volleyball here in this 2.43 it wasn't anything grand that was done in the first episode in terms of the sport itself but in terms of getting the relationships for the characters the character development as in learning about the characters and them turning and um, one character turning a ragtag fake volleyball team into a team that actually takes volleyball kind of serious is a pretty cool plot line that I'm interested in watching in. And so what happens in 2.3 CN is that this great volleyball player from a really good school leaves, comes to this unknown school, CN. He comes to that school and he has a reputation for being pretty much an asshole at the school he was at before. But the people did not know that who was working with him on the volleyball team at first, but then that gets exposed, right? Um, you know, in like in a half the episode, maybe toward the end, but there was just these things, specific things that happened that caused that character to come to the new school. And now he has to do different things to try to get back in the life of volleyball. But what adds depth into that is that this person left his area when he was younger then came back when all of that happened in the area he moved to and so the person he was close friends with when he was younger and left who still sees him as a best friend is the main person by his side so now we're seeing relationship that was a really close one that now is completely deteriorated and one person is acting like we're still best super friends and the other one is all like we're not even we don't really know each other like that no more and it's really cool seeing that dynamic with them and how that dynamic is going to transform into them playing the sport together so that really is really exciting and what i'm hyped for i'm hoping that 2.43 causes me to appreciate hike you more and make me get through it faster because i am dragging my feet but the next one the fourth one hiramiya 
I don't watch rom-coms. I have never seen a rom-com. I've never read a rom-com. Nothing. But Hoda Mia is the first rom-com. I did check out Kaguya-sama Love is War. I didn't really enjoy it the first like five episodes I watched. So I said, eh, I'm gonna just put this down. Well, Hoda Mia, it's a rom-com that I didn't know was a rom-com when I put on the first episode. And I watched it. And what Hoda Mia basically is about, if you have not seen the manga, is that it's about this girl and this guy who go to the same high school and one day after school she runs into this guy who helped her little brother and he is this sexy looking pierced up guy and she's all like oh he's so cool looking he's so hot and she invites him over to um invites him well he already came over from helping out the brother and so they have dinner together a lunch or dinner together and she's all like oh so what school do you go to this that and the third and then the dude looks at him and goes what do you mean it's me from da -da 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 class from homeroom and she's like, what? So now she's completely in shock because she realizes the, the otaku looking kid in school that nobody ever talked to, that everybody assumed is super smart outside of school has all of these piercings and these tattoos and is actually a really cool dude and isn't even really an otaku. So now she has this interest in him and there's you know there's some the comedy there with that type of stuff right but she has his interest in him but he does, isn't sure if that interest in him is a relationship interest or she's just being nice to him right so some things happen throughout the episode where he gets his confirmation of what's really going on and it happened in such a cute way to where now i'm excited to see where the rest of this um series is going to go because i like romances within like you know um action series right but this is now a comedy based romance and it's a slice of life based romance and i'm actually vibing with it it's because the things that they talk about is on the more mature end not like it's some 18 plus thing but it's definitely more realistic i think than what i've seen in the past what the thing like kaguya sama where it's this over dramatization and it really isn't my speed but i think horamiya is a much more grounded down to earth more realistic type of deal and i enjoy it and last but not least for the five that i need you guys to look check out like i'm I, this is a doncho cosign i need you to check out would be jobless reincarnation jobless reincarnation is another isekai i know i know i know doncho you and these damn isekai but listen bro I love me a good isekai. And Jobless Reincarnation is a phenomenal isekai so far. I don't know anything manga related. I've only seen the first episode. So I know you're like, how was it phenomenal after one episode, Doncho? Well, you have to understand that isekai, as you guys know, and some of you guys complain about, follow the same tropes, follow the same themes over and over again. While Jobless Reincarnation seemed to have added a little spin on it, where a guy who was a piece of shit in his old life, Life. he comes over into this new world he's a young kid with all of his memories he can think like an adult this that and the third and he has this little bit of talent for magic right more than a little bit but he has this talent for magic where this isekai kind of differentiates is that this guy is hiding the fact that he's a grown-ass man in a now a young child's body and now he's trying to maneuver keeping that secret while also learning about the world he's in and finding the resolve to change the person that he was who was a jobless nobody in his original life to trying to be someone important in this life and the first episode is still just a kid you know we, we don't get anything adult or any type of time skip by the end of the first episode but we get introduced to the key characters that i believe will be the key characters at least that are going to help him in his journey and so it turns into this really good funny almost down to earth type of um series for a first episode so i really enjoyed jobless reincarnation and i'm excited to see more of it i'm really really excited to see more of it and what exactly is going to be done within it to not only keep it fresh and keep it new but to also keep you on your toes to feel like you're not seeing the same isekai formula that you've seen a million times before so those are the five that i want you guys to check out i'm reading i'm watching a lot i keep saying reading because you know i usually read but i'm watching a lot of stuff this season but those five right there are the five that i think you guys should really 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 check out now the next five that I am keeping my eye on that I that I'm not sure will be good but I'm but I've seen the first episode and I'm like hmm that might be something 
I'm not going to go in depth with them, but I'm going to go through really quickly. So the first one is Wonder Egg Priority. I have no idea how to explain Wonder Egg Priority. That alone, I think, is a reason why it should be watched. I don't know what the con I, the concept so far comes off is just this young girl, her best friend killed herself. And now something has happened where she thinks that she can do things to save her best friend who killed themselves. I don't want to explain any more than that because I because I feel like if I explain more, you're going to lose what's supposed to hook you in the first episode. So that's all I'm going to say. But Wonder Egg Priority comes off as something that I think is going to really surprise people. And it's only going to have 12 episodes. It's done by Cloverworks. So I really think it's going to surprise people and have people like, whoa, why was nobody talking about this? Whoa, why wasn't this pro promo? You know, it's, it's it comes off very, very unique. The second one I want to talk about is Skate Infinity. I used to be a skateboarder when I was young. So when I seen a skateboarding anime, I said, hmm, I'm going to check that out. Visually, Skate Infinity was phenomenal that first episode. The plot so far was funny, intriguing, and I'm already loving the character dynamic between the two main characters that I'm seeing about the form. And what Skate Infinity is about is basically, so far, it's about this main main character in the world of, of of extreme skating where like you know not like emx type shit extreme skating but racing racing skating not tricks racing but you know racing with some tricks involved in it you can hit some tricks while you're doing the racing and so the main character you know he kind of um isn't doing too hot you know kind of making himself look look a little sick out here um in the in the in the racing world even though he's not a bad skateboarder but then the new day main character who is new to the skateboarding world comes and shows out but the reason why he shows out i'm not going to tell you because i feel like that's another thing that will ruin the episode so when you watch this episode you might be able to guess because they do some good foreshadowing um of why he ends up being good toward the end of the episode but check it out skate infinity let me know it's one that i definitely will be checking out every week and will not be missing the next one the third will be outside picnic outside picnic is this anime where the animation goes from i like this too that cgi kind of but i like when it does the 2d but then the plot line of basically there being this other world that these two girls go into and they basically explore this other world trying to figure out its secrets and one of the girls is looking for a friend of hers that went missing in this other world right and it is based like in our world and then you can go over to this other side they basically go through this experience of trying to figure out what this other side is about and basically exploring it right and so with that that's what makes it so interesting to me is that it's this other world on the other side of ours and they could traverse back and forth but there are certain things that can happen to them and the other side that will kill them they're consistently being hit with threats every episode only two episodes out but the first two episodes where they were being hit with these life-threatening things that will kill them straight up kill them no sugar coating none of that these things are out to kill them and so these girls learn how to maneuver that it kind of feels like silent hill which is a weird thing to say but it kind of gave me a silent hill feeling when i was um watching the first two episodes so i decided to keep my i'm trying to keep my eye on it see what happens it hasn't overly impressed me but it has intrigued me enough to where i want to see where the characters go the fourth one is suppose a kid from the last dungeon boonies goes to a starter town i know another one of those really long anime names but this one i love right um I was going to put this on the ones I need you guys to check out, but I'm all, I decided not to put that on that one because I don't know if the plot is going to be good. So far, the plot doesn't feel like it's going to be great, but it feels like there's going to be enough twists and turns to keep you compelled and keep you into the story. And basically, it's exactly like it sounds. What if a kid from the last Dungeon Boonies went to a starter town? So the main character, Lloyd, thinks he's this weak kid because he's the weakest in his town. This town is a town that is right outside right after the strongest dungeon in their world so everyone in that area is already extremely powerful and Lloyd may be the weakest there but compared to everyone else in the world he's strong as hell so seeing that dynamic and seeing characters who are established powers like in the military see Lloyd in the starter town and like freeze up like 
who the hell is this strong ass kid? But Lloyd thinks he's weak and doesn't even use his powers in the in the right way. It's very weird. So, but it's also very funny and interesting. I think the comedy aspect and what really pulls me in. I laugh so much when I'm watching this um anime. So I think that's really what pulls pulls me in and will pull most of the audience in is just the comedy factor of it. So check that out if you do like some funny anime with overpowered characters. And the last but certainly not least least is Dr. Ramoon Mysterious Disease Specialist. Now this one is weird. I'm just gonna put it out on the table. This one is weird, odd, it has a lot going on with it. The first episode this girl was crying condiments. I'm, I'm, I'm dead ass. A girl was crying condiments and the main character, the Dr. Ramon dude, basically they do this explanation of this, these mysterious type of power that affect people's hearts and make and gives them these mysterious diseases. OK, and this doctor, we haven't got any explanation of how he does it, what this, that, and the third. But this doctor guy, young guy comes in. He looks like a Maki character, to be honest. He comes in and he helps these people handle the trauma or whatever they have to handle so they stop crying or well stop crying that was just that girl but they'll stop having that disease whatever that mysterious disease is only one episode is out so far the second episode preview a dude's dick turned into a fish cake apparently like that's apparently his mysterious disease so i'm go ahead and telling y'all now this anime is going to be weird but that's why i'm keeping my eye on it because it's probably going to be very fucking funny because the condiments of tears episode was kind of funny like i i laughed a good bit but this next episode i can imagine it being hilarious because the dude's dick turned into a rice a fucking fish cake i don't know like what like what possibly what happened to you what trauma affected you when your dick turned into a fucking fish cake so that is what has me like okay i'm gonna watch this because there's gonna be some wonky crazy hilarious stuff that i can get out of this no doubt no none of that i can just laugh my ass off and that's what is, that is what i'm looking forward to when i go into dr ramon so as i said that was five anime that i'm like you guys need to check out weekly this season and then five where i'm like hey you guys might want to check this out this season right so i hope you guys really really enjoyed those the ones I bring up and I really hope you guys go and check those out and you do enjoy what you see they're very unique all of these I think and they very do some things about them that can appeal to almost anyone if you have a range into what you like i know some of us have we like to stick to our battle show and we like to stick to our um dramas and we like to stick to our rom-coms and stuff like that but i think all of these has some variety has some range to them and i think it'll be something you guys will really really enjoy okay so like i said before if you do like getting this type of content from me doncho don't forget to hit that subscribe button the bell icon and the like button and also leave a comment if there's some seasonals that you're like doncho are you watching this comment you know if there's some manga that you're like doncho are you reading this comment i love seeing stuff like that and i love getting back to you guys about those type of things okay so like i always say thank you for coming back to the hideout you guys it is always my pleasure peace